Our Bible lesson for this morning is in the Psalm 120, 120. As you can see, if you go to 120, all the way to 134, they have the things that they sung of the saints. So 120 is the song for today. I call on the Lord in my distress, and He answers me. Save me, O Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. What will He do to you? And what more besides the deceitful tongue? He will punish you with warriors, warriors, sharp arrows, with burning coals of the broom tree. Woe to me that I dwell in Mecca, and I live among the tents of Peter. Too long have I lived among those who hate peace. I am a man of peace, but when I speak, they are for war. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we pray that your Spirit will talk to us this morning and help us to learn the lessons that you have for us. Touch our hearts, challenges, teachings. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, we're going to Jerusalem. All right, we're going to Jerusalem and worship us. It's the time again, the time of the year that men and young boys, families, everybody needs to go to Jerusalem to worship. And I prepare here, I prepare my luggage because I'm ready to go. I don't know if you're ready to go, I am ready to go. And I just took the essential. You know what the essential to go? You know, we're going to camp on the way there and all that kind of thing. So I said, Mom, well, I'm going to just get the essential to get there. So let me see what we have here. What's the essential here? Duct tape. You cannot go to Jerusalem without the duct tape, okay? You need that. I don't know what's going to happen to the tent or uh, anything with the luggage or it's got work. You don't have Monday, you use the duct tape, and that will do it. <laughs> All right. There we go. Oh, I got this one here. This one is very important. Just essential. There we go. Okay. <laughs> very important. And I have a backup thing too. Just in case. Just in case. I have one more thing here. There we go. I, I, I learned that it's very hot there, and the situation is scary. Heated people, fire, all that kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to help them to chill out, cool down, so I can be a fire extinguisher. So people are kind of okay. I see a fight. Got a map? And this map will take me to. That's not the choice. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. And I have this here. Who oh. put this here? This is not the essential. But it's here. So don't tell anybody that we just got that part in the day, please. I don't want to get in trouble with the prison carry kind of. Wow, this guy is a. Daddy bear, come on. The problem is, every time of the year, this song for their great, you know why? Because they are called the songs of Hacktech, or some people call the Matrix songs, and some people call the Steps of the Temple. Uh, but this is what they would do. But the, the main definition for this song, this short song, are that people would travel to Jerusalem and they would sing throughout the whole it was a family thing. Remember when Jesus' family, when he was young, they went to the, the, the Passover and then they got, he got lost for the despair not that he was lost. And, and they forgot him, the temple, all that kind of thing. It was a family event, a 
praying to neighbors, everybody. They back and they had that care about it. And they would walk and they would camp and, 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 and rest and they would start walking again. And they, throughout the journey, they were singing this song. And for this is what the Bible says in Deuteronomy. We have that there. Yes. Three times a year. This is what the Lord commanded. Three times a year. All your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place you will choose. At the feast of the unleavened bread, the feast of peace, and the feast of tabernacle. No man should appear before the Lord empty handed. So this is what this is the commandment. Three times a year. Everybody, because time to go, go to the kids, the mom wants to go, grandfather, father, everybody, they want to go, let's go. So these are the, the feet that they have to go. The next one, there we go. Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. Those are the feet throughout the year that they had to go. Every man had to go. So you was a church, no matter where you live, you had to go. And these songs express their feelings, their fears, their worshipful, their, yeah, their expectation to get to Jerusalem, and the challenge that they would face going in that journey. So this is the, the history of this block of songs that we have here. I'm beginning with Psalm 120. It's the beginning of the journey. They leave far away, and they have to travel. And they struggle in that situation. So this is what we're going to learn in this song. The lesson for uh, we learn in, in this song here, the lesson that they learn going through Jerusalem. Going to Jerusalem. The first lesson that we learn is that they were living among other people. That is the first challenge that they face. And here we find two men, Meshach and Peter. And they were farmers and first cops. And people, they were leaving there and they were going from there. We're leaving there and now we have to travel to Jerusalem. And we're going to cross through places that we don't know, that people don't know they worship other gods. We live in places that people worship other gods. And we're not the majority anymore. We're not in Jerusalem anymore. We're not in Israel anymore. But we live in another place. And they have different beliefs. And they deal with life in a different way that we used to do. And we have to handle that. So they are living far away. That is the first thing, living among other people. They are living far away. They are living with non-Christians. They live with people that do not believe in what they believe. They are struggling there. And now is the time to turn. They are pagans. They believe in other gods. And they're living with violence, that the song that you mentioned, that the violence for people that's war. The way that they resolve things, but we're seeing this even today in the Middle East, the way that they resolve things is the strongest one win and kill the weakest one. This is it. This is how they feel. And that was the way since then. They said, we live here for violence, people are fighting. People, if we do not believe in what they believe, they can kill us, all that they believe among other people. And that is the challenge, the first challenge that they face. They are living far away, they are going to Jerusalem in that journey to worship God, to serve God, but they live in a different land. The second thing that we learn that they live with opposition. The people that are there, they, this is how they define the people. They are blindly deceitful tongues, false tongues, people that talk against them. And sometimes this is what we feel sometimes. We are not the majority anymore. The Christians are not the majority anymore. No. Even when people say, oh, yeah, I don't go to church, I go to church, it's not the majority anymore. We live in a time that we are becoming the minority. And people do not believe and they and they and they and they are bold to say that to you and to me. They're bold. 
So maybe we the position, we want to get position, the position is to talk, what they want to talk. The enemy wants to convince us that we are not God's children, or good enough. Why you have to go to Jerusalem? Why you have to serve all the God? Don't you have God here? We have so many gods here where you live. Why you have to travel to Jerusalem to worship your God? Are our gods worse than your gods? We do. So they have to deal with that. And sometimes we are going to hear that, that you are not the child of God. You are know? not good enough. We're not there yet. And we have to believe in it. Opposition. The enemy wants to convince us that coming to church is useless. Why are we going to Jerusalem? Why are we spending that time? Taking all those days off to go there. You could make money here. And now you have to pay for our family. It's useless. And I know that the enemy said that to you this morning. And I'm glad that you did not listen. You're here. You're here. Now you heard that voice. Go to church is useless. Why are you going there? Why are you going there? The enemy wants to convince us that the best way to solve a problem is through the use of power. That's just that's the way that he wants to teach us. That's the way we resolve that by force. So they had to leave with that opposition their whole life. And even going through those security calls, they had to hear those things. When they had to buy things, for the for the journey. And they said, what where are we going? The whole family is gone? How are we going to make money to pay for the whole trip there? Can't you worship here? It's useful something. You're going to take an animal, a good animal, and you're going to sacrifice that animal and waste your money? Is the best one that you have? Psalmist has one way of doing it. He's going and he's living with God's help. Living with God's help. This is what we have to do. There is no other way of doing it. You're going to hear those things, you're going to face those situations. People will come to you and say that what you're doing is useless. People are going to talk about you. People are going to oppose you. People are going to say things and try to stop you to serve God. And how we're going to live? We're going to live with God's help. How we're going to go? We're going to go with God's help. How how we're going to journey? We're going to journey with God's help. This is how we're going. This is what we're going to do. This is what they did. The first thing that they did, they cried out. They cried to the Lord. This is what I cried to the Lord. I cried. And they cried, Lord, you see those things. We cannot handle them. We're not going to fight. We're not going to do those things. You're, you're listening to them. They're saying all those things against me. I'm for peace and they are for war. Lord, listen to me. They cry, they call for the Lord. The second thing, they cry for the Lord and call for the Lord, and they know that He will answer. He will hear. They're sure that God will answer. They say that in the song. You will hear. God is watching what's going on in your life. Do not 
not forget that. He knows what is going on in your life. Do not forget that. He knows. He knows every word that hurts you. He knows. And he heard. Every thought, every gesture against you, he knows. And when we call to the Lord, when we cry to the Lord, he hears. It's very important for us to know that. Even when he is silent, he knows what's going on. He did not lose the control. He did not. He has the control of everything and he knows everything. And the psalmist concludes with this. He knows that he will punish them. He will punish them. The lively, sacred tongue, the possum, God will punish them. The terrors of the Lord are his arrows, the psalmist mentioned it, and his wrath is compared to a burning coals of Jennifer. And why did he mention that plant here, that wood here? Because it has a fierce heat and keep fire very long. This is what the psalmist is saying that how God will handle his saying We don't need to do anything. God will deal with them. We don't need to do anything. God will take care of us and God will take care of us. And we need to understand that. How we're going to leave, how we're going to do this journey. We're coming from far away. Uh, we're facing opposition. We're going to do it with God's help. With God's help. Every day. Every day of our lives. We walk toward God. We walk with God in the middle of opposition. Far away. Strange land. We're leaving a stranger. The world is changing so fast that we do not recognize anymore. But we are walking with God, with His help. With His help. <coughs> God is going to take care of you, protect you, and help you. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father, we are in this journey together. And with you, a journey to serve you, to love you, to worship you, to learn from you. And we are coming from far away. And we are facing opposition. And we need, O oh Lord, we need your help. Finish your journey. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.